the first time. Today we're meeting with a wonderful person who is a mentor for many people. He's a philosopher, uh, a writer, and an artist, Alexander Gennadievich Hakimov. I would begin with, with a small quotation. We are suffering over petty problems and we are spending our thoughts and feelings in vain. We are looking at our feet, only at our feet. Remember that we were learned, just look at your feet, don't fall down. We are dying, Didn't and have, having not understanding anything. We, we don't understand who we are, why we came here, but deep inside of us we have one aspiration to come to come back home to the remote world where where we came from where such people are living but they are happy and they are living at home i even think that sometimes they think about us and they are sorry for us don't you feel this remember haven't you had the feeling that somebody is uh, is sorry for you and is waiting for you and why uh, lovers they are looking at the sky and the stars and this sky is opening for them as a door why why we see why we are flying in, in, in our dreams why is this, there are so many questions and this is the beginning of a monologue from the from the movie Fantasies of Faryatiev. This is the 1970s. Andrei Mironov was playing this role. And you can see that different people in different times, they, they divide into those who are interested in the material world and they study this material world. And there are those who are looking somewhere some above trying to answer difficult questions about spiritual world. And our today's topic is the taste of a spiritual world. And this topic was born after I was we were talking with my friend and we were watching our children and we thought that our our children, they pick up the taste uh, for material things, for gadgets, for phones, tasty food and beautiful clothes. They, you don't, don't even have to uh, teach children to take this, pick up these tastes. But the spiritual world, it doesn't, it's not open because we don't have knowledge. Maybe because we are too, we don't know about it and we don't remember about it. I think that that we should talk about it. And when there is lack of knowledge in some sphere, we have to turn to the professional. And so today we are talking about this very important topic, very important part of our life. I'm sure that the success even in a material world has a source in a spiritual world. Please help us to understand. So let's begin with, can we describe the spiritual world for a material consciousness? What is a spiritual world? Is this the world of absolute freedom, absolute free consciousness? When my daughter asked what we're talking about today, she asked, how can we believe uh, people who are telling about spiritual world? Because, because they never been there. How can they tell about it? If they weren't there, it's impossible to talk about spiritual world if a person would never been there. But we have to know one thing when we are talking about spiritual world, about its place, where where is it? We need to know that it that it is in our heart. We don't need to search somewhere. We shouldn't choose it. Each one of us knows what is it. If even I would ask people 
What kind of life you would like to would like to have, would like to live? If you would um, free all your desires, where would you go? What do you want? Please tell me. And you would describe in the end the spiritual world because it's in, in the deep depth of your heart. And this world, we just have so many abundant things in our consciousness, in our mind, and it, they are mixed with our idealistic um, notions in this complicated world. People don't believe in fairy tales. They believe in the universe and the Father Frost. They believe in God. People feel this in the heart, this re different reality. They are listening and they like it. Even adults like to hear about myths, but our concepts, modern concepts, they, are, they don't let this, uh, our belief to be free. We should know that where there is no belief, uh, faith in the absolute truth, uh, there is a beginning of a big lie. And there are many false concepts and notions in our consciousness, some petty things, and we are just looking at our feet for, for all our life. But we can't see any important things. And we can't understand why did we leave. I'm just uh, getting married, I'm earning money. And these questions, they don't have any answers. And we cannot see our true desires here. But we have it. Just like in 1979, there was such a monologue. Why it was like that? There were no such words, and it was heard. But now there are so many opinions and concepts, and no one would hear even such a monologue. We have such a great flow of information now. When we were talking about Francis of Assisi, about his, his biography in the history, one famous biographer said that if you want to feel this personality, you would have to lose all modern values. And we could only see this personality only on the background without the modern values. And in Russia, on the background of atheism, for many years we were atheists. 80% 80, 80 of the atheism in the world was USSR. And on this background, when somebody was speaking about the soul, it was um, really hurt. But now, when we are talking about, we are saying that I'm a Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist, we are talking about the soul, but we don't notice it. Unless, unless we would feel a spiritual taste from the person who could uh, give you the taste of the spiritual world. This person may open for you the spiritual world. And you may see on the background of this um, boring life, you could see this jewel. On the background of artificial decorations, you would see this you could see this diamond, but we could take this sp spiritual the taste of the spiritual world only from the person who already has this taste. Spiritual world is already in our hearts, and there are all answers are there. This is our soul, and we have to 
and we have to be we have to look inside to begin this process of um, introduction it's impossible to get the taste even if you if you don't have knowledge if you and of course um, if we have we don't have any knowledge about it we cannot be surprised we cannot serve in that direction you said that it's impossible to do without the faith and faith is, can be transferred through a person who already has this faith and who is already introduced to this jewelry and who has the knowledge and he can transfer this taste I understand now how it happens. Even on the primitive level it works. My husband, Louis, he was telling me when we didn't travel anywhere what kind of a cake he had in the childhood. He was describing it so so brightly that I got this taste of happiness of his childhood uh, because it was transferred from one heart to another heart. <clears throat> so let's try to understand how can we transfer this taste to our children, to our friends who are interested in this. How can we transfer it not not only the taste but even the direction you said that we need to get the knowledge from a person who already has this knowledge what can we do with this problem I cannot tell my child go and listen Alexander Hakimov. My daughter is li trying listening for a little bit to your lectures and then running away, but she wouldn't see it and listen to it deeply to transfer this faith and spiritual experience. There are two things that we have to keep in mind. Now we are talking about the daughter, about teenager. Also we have to keep in mind the age. There are two things. A person has to have a taste and knowledge to be able to transfer, transfer it. And also there must be a good soil for transferring. If the soil is bad, we won't be able to do it. Even if a doctor would tell you, uh, if it would heal you, if you won't use it, you won't, be, you won't recover. So there must be a good soil. There must be an active faith, so that I could follow the instructions. Because otherwise, to make a show of a spiritual life, I cannot do it. This is a very intimate process. You cannot use the show here. You cannot make a chemical reaction and to show what is the soul. It's impossible to, to show the soul to somebody. It would be quite cynical. We never study the soul. We study the body. There, there is the soul. It, it enlivens the body. Without the soul, the body won't be alive. There won't be just some material things. But at some moment, you would see that this is just a dead, dead substance. It's not alive. But the soul enlivens this body, a living force. This is me. I am in this body. Somebody in, in, is in the man's body, somebody is in the woman's body. But the living force is the one. We are all equal spiritually. But materially we are occupying different body and we are building our life on these divisions on these differences somebody is a woman somebody is a man but this is just the body 
And the body cannot describe the soul. When we are studying the body biologically of a, a person or, the, or a frog, just to study, they are cutting this body, they are showing its brain, we see his bones, his nerves, and the heart, and veins, and so on. And we could study it, cutting the dead body, but we, we, we've never studied the soul. No one has the method to study the soul, to examine the soul. And we don't have any education about it. But we cannot study the soul only from one heart to another heart. One living being with pure heart, with full knowledge of himself and, the, and God, he can transfer this knowledge to another person if there is an auspicious soil, if the soil is ready. For example, in Bhagavad Gita there is a verse, how to do it. If you want to see the truth, this uh, eternal truth full of bliss, if you want to join it, you have to find a person who sees this truth with, with, with his heart. It's impossible to see this truth with, um, with our eyes. And you have to inquire this person, to serve him, and to to treat him with reverence. This is the soil. If you would find such a disciple, if you would have uh, respectful questions, then it would then it would grow. You, would, you shouldn't have it on the bad soil. How to interact with the spiritual world? Uh, how is how is it important? For example, in the dialogues of Plato, when he is describing the conversation with his teacher, so Socrates, he tells that the spiritual world is a world of ideas, and the idea is is living by itself. It is it is transforming uh, in, through the channel, and it gets the opportunity to be manifested in the material world. So the spiritual world, in some sense, is the source of the material world, and material world is its reflection. Is there different levels? Because many people, they are calling spirituality, uh, cultural life, uh, theater, bullet, and they, they call it spirit, spiritual life. But somebody is uh, indifferent to this and deeply studying religion, not just rituals, but uh, uh, spiritual, invisible connection with the source which is transforming the heart, who transforms uh, the heart and makes it soft and strong, loving. Uh, but I know that there, is, um, there are scriptures, Upanishads, they are describing the variegatedness of uh, spiritual world, and in Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third canto, 15th chapter, there is a description of the kingdom of God. So there is a um, great um, hi hierarchy, like an iceberg. We can see in our material world just the top of it. And, and we call it spirituality. Can we talk about it, please? Could you comment on this? If we are talking about material world, 
and the material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. This is a logical, and it is described in Bhagavad Gita that that material world is compared with banyan tree, and there are so many roots, and this is like a stepping tree, and one tree may be, may occupy such a huge place, it's very complicated, it's a gigantic tree, but it, it grows, it's, it's upside down, its roots are above, and the top is is on the bottom. And following this logic that we are living in, in a reflect, reflected world, it means that the spiritual world is the opposite. What we have in the bottom, they have at the top, and vice versa. And by this analogy, the sages, they help us to understand it, that matter and soul, they are opposite by their qualities. What is material world by one word? And in the universe it, it was described for many, many years, for many centuries and mi millennia. And what's the conclusion of the sages? That material world is the, is the place of suffering, the place of anxieties. And we know by our experience that life is full of anxieties and dangers, and sometimes uh, fa mortal dangers. There may be wars, accidents, conflicts, quarrels, uh, bad weather. So we are, an we are anxious on every step. If you don't have money, we are anxious. If you, if we have money, we also are anxious not to lose it. We are anxious if we have a ch children, don't have a children. If we have a husband, or don't have a husband. We are always anxious. When we are getting old, we are also anxious because of that. And this is called Kundha, a place of uh, anxieties. And the sages are describing the universe by that, like Kundha. It means the opposite, the quality is by Kundha, a place without anxieties. What does it mean? It means that there are no accidents, no diseases, no old age. We, in the heart we feel that it's very good to live like that. We would like to live in, the, in such place where there are no enemies, no diseases, no old age. There are only games, only plays. There are no danger. There are waves of love, waves of knowledge, waves of relationships. There are no deceit. There is only game. And when we meditate on the opposite qualities of the material world, we are starting to guess about the qualities of the highest world. And the material world is a distorted reflection of the spiritual world. The biggest anxieties we get from um, from mar marital relationships, and suffering and happiness we feel in this sphere in our personal life. If we don't have, uh, if you don't have a, this marital life, there will be no anxieties. But in material world, you need this taste of uh, this happiness, and this uh, marital relationship are very important for us. We are living within with these relationships. And we get the biggest happiness and biggest suffering in this area of life. This rasa is reflected from the spiritual world. This is the biggest reason, the reason of the, of the biggest anxieties in the material world. But in the spiritual world, there is a rasa of them. Uh, it's on the top. It includes all other types of relationships. It's the biggest happiness and the most intimate relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just imagine, uh, God has marital relationship, has a parental relationship and friendly friendship, and there is service. 
and there is some shanta. These are all rasas, highest tastes of the spiritual world. But here they are reflected in the material world, and they are the reason of anxieties. Temporary children, temporary friends, temporary wives and husbands, they may cheat us, and the world may be destructed by the, by the war. So they are reflected in a different dimension in the world of suffering. These are how the sages are describing this world. And there are many details we can see. So let's meditate uh, what is the spiritual world uh, if we know that it is the opposite of the material world. Here it's, we have to work so hard to be happy. But in the, in the spiritual world we don't have to toil to be happy. We are happy by our nature. We are a part of love. We are not searching for love. You are love. But here we have to learn how to love. And we want to be loved here. And we are searching for that person. But in the spiritual world, you, you love everything. And you love everybody. And when you become to love this world and this God, then you would be able to understand what is the spiritual life. Thank you. So our body is... It belongs to material world, and it is uh, built from its material elements, from water and chemical elements. But uh, spiritual consciousness, uh, the soul, who has the opportunity to be in relationships with uh, Supreme, in a parental marital relationship, this soul doesn't belong to this world, and consequently, when the body is dead, we always say that he's gone, he has left this world, so the spirit, the soul, is, is going to another in invisible world, which we cannot see yet. We don't remember about it. We don't remember the place that we came from, but this person is, feels good there, and he feels that just, he just left this the world of suffering. But the picture is more complicated, because we are living here for millions of lives. We don't live one life, this is not the only life in this world, we have been, we've been living here for millions of lives, before getting be born by, as a human being, we've been living in the kingdom of animals, plants, birds, and also we We've been on other planets. No one can say when when we came to a material universe. It's impossible to say. Just imagine, we are here for a long, long time. We left our spiritual abode for a long time ago, and we are migrating from one body to another, searching for happiness. This is what we do now, and we want to be happy with this body, using this body. This is the, such a complicated picture, but if the picture of reincarnation is described in Bhagavad Gita, the reason of reincarnation, the reason of next body, what kind of body I would get in my next life, the reason is my mood, which I formed during this life. There are uh, evil people, there are intellectual people, there are sinful people, there are righteous people, and these are different moods. Somebody is living like pigs, and in the moment of death, this mood would define your next life. If you would uh, develop the spiritual consciousness, then you would go to a spiritual world for forever, and you leave this cycle of birth and death. To win, the, you should win the death by this. You are conquering the death because you won't be born again, and you won't take the material body, which will be, which is dying always.
But you are getting your eternal nature of the soul. The soul is the living force, it is eternal, it's deathless. So you should search for eternity inside of yourself, not in, not in medicines, but inside of you. No one wants to die because, uh, because we are not the body. There is a conflict we have with the body. There is a conflict with my old age. Somehow we don't want to die, we don't want to get old. The soul, because the soul never gets old, the soul never get diseased. That's why we don't like it in this body. The soul never dies. And because for the soul it's a strange thing, death. Any ch children would say that let me, uh, let me live forever and my parents live forever. This is the aspiration of any soul, but our body is conflicting with us. It doesn't listen to our desires because we didn't hasn't developed the spiritual body. Material body is given for us to live a selfish life because we wanted it. We, we got this body, selfish body, for ourselves. And this is the material body. But if this material body we would use for ser serving the Lord, then you will see that this body is spiritualizing and transforming and transforming into the spiritual body, like uh, an iron. Uh, becomes a fire when it is lying in the fire. The same way this material body, our thoughts, our speech and feelings we can be spiritualized due to spiritual activity, selfless loving service to the Lord. This is the strongest medicine to remember our ourselves. To remember ourselves, our soul, to be established in this understanding of ourselves that we are misunderstood the soul. Probably it means uh, to control many desires, our mind, which are dragging us down and um, don't let uh, our spiritual body to be purified. Our consciousness is saturate saturates every cell of our body our consciousness makes our material body as far as i can understand and we've been talking when a person wants to realize himself to purify himself he must search for for a teacher, for a mentor, who can answer his questions. And as a rule, this teacher has to be a person of some ancient succession, because the knowledge always comes from a teacher to a disciple, and it must be very pure. You said, you've, you've said so, so, so many interesting things, some and I have to confess that uh, being with you, I would just to absorb the knowledge with my heart, which starts to work by itself, and you couldn't even notice when it starts to work. I think, I think um, association with a spiritual teacher enlivens our intuition. Maybe I would try to continue and to ask you the next question. Though I just don't want to ask you, just want to listen to you. Very interesting thought I heard that a person have, has to learn to has to learn self control because our bodily desires we have to learn to control them and to control our living force inside of our life. Our body is always requiring something and it requires not always useful things. So there must be some controlling energies so that we wouldn't do some bad things and not to uh, because we 
have the responsibility for our every step and we shouldn't overburden our fate. We have a responsibility. And it's so it's so important to control ourselves and it's not only the will for example to quit smoking and to quit drinking for somebody it's very difficult for an ordinary person how to control these um, inclinations he would say that I cannot do it I tried but I can I just can't quit these bad habits this habit is stronger than me but if you open this notion of the beauty of the soul, if you reveal this experience, you just forget about these bad habits without any efforts. When you get this higher taste, you just forget about this habit. I remember one case. One, one woman told me in the 90s, that her husband was an alcoholic and he couldn't quit drinking. Uh, she was suffering and he was suffering. And somebody advised me there is a near from Krasnodar there is a lake of lotuses. I've been there recently, and this is this is really a miracle to see this huge lake uh, in um, with uh, lotuses. This is like a paradise, as if you are in a different world. Lotus is symbolizes the divine beauty and purity. In India and China, lotus is a sacred flower. And it's very popular there. And somebody advised her to take her husband to that to the lotus lake so that he could only see this beauty and it could help. Not, uh, not the doctors, not medicines, but just to see something, something unusual, something very beautiful. And she showed her husband this a lake, lotus lake. After that, for half a year, he, he, he didn't even think about the alcohol. He understood that he is living in vain. He just uh, he realized that there is some different world, a higher world, where he is li living senselessly and suffering from his habits. He, for half a year, he, he didn't even remember about it, but after half a year, he came back. Uh, but the problem is how to keep this experience, how to keep this taste. We have to purify it every day. We need some spiritual practice every day to purify ourselves regularly, to purify our feelings, our mind, our thoughts with spiritual activities, with spiritual scriptures, with spiritual association. It, it will be quite easy to control ourselves in this pro with this process, and it will be even a pleasant, happy process and you would feel that you are getting stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier. So practice. So practice is what is helping us to, 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 to grow in a spiritual education. This person, he has seen uh, beauty in the nature, he has seen He's seen another reality. So we people, we are different in our levels of consciousness. Somebody may see the spiritual reality in the theater. And he's uh, visiting theater. Somebody is like loves uh, opera or ballet and museums. And he feels this different reality there. Somebody comes to spirituality through some big losses in life. So spiritual world 
gives everyone the opportunity to develop on our level, in our rhythm. We can imagine that ants, and he can't realize the person, he can't realize the human being. He's too big for for an ant. An ant wouldn't be able to understand my dreams, my complex um, thoughts. The same way a human being cannot imagine the, the supreme. It is said that he is bigger of the biggest and the smaller of the smallest. He is parading the whole universes. It means that we need to remember and know that uh, spiritual self um, self realization is the reason of our happiness. In this way, we are moving toward eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Because we don't like to think that we are will be living in this material world eternally, and no no one wants to suffer here eternally, like in a washing machine. How to get rid of this circle? How to find the beacon on this way? How to see the goal? When I can see this goal, then I can aspire for it. To keep the goal. Yes, the goal is very high. When we don't see the goal, for example, when we are in the ocean, we cannot see it by our eyes, and also when we are speaking about the spiritual world, we also don't see it with our eyes. And it's so far away from us, and we, we can see it with our eyes, our goal. But, for example, I've never been in India before, but at school, on the geography, they, they said that there is an India, there is a map, you, you may see India here, there is a capital Delhi, and they speak Hindi, Bengali there, there are many states, so they will telling us something about India, but I've never seen it. It was so far away from me, but I could, I, I've got the faith on the basis of the book. And people who were t telling about India from travelers, and my consciousness also told me that uh, there must be some other countries and languages. So never seeing India, I accepted the fact that it exists. <coughs> so afterwards, I could visit it, and I've seen it with my own eyes. So I got my faith through the book, through travelers, through other people, and also uh, on the basis of my own intelligence. The same way in the ocean, I have a map, I have a compass, I see the direction and I can find the road, I can find the way in the ocean, if I have the knowledge how to use the map, the compass and the stars. And you see, there are so many ways to find even the highest goal. And to find the God, we also need some compass, some maps, some books and people who have been there. There must be our intelligence, and on this basis we may move. And finally, we may see this goal by your own eyes. You would feel this goal when you would, um, when you would approach it. You would feel it with your, with your own senses. For example, we don't see uh, we don't see the roses in the garden at night, but the wind brings us the aroma, and by this aroma we see that there are roses, blossoming roses, although we don't see them with our eyes. And the same, there is the aroma of the eternity, knowledge, and bliss. These are the signs, these aromas are the signs that you are somewhere close. The wind is bringing this aroma, and you must be very, very close and very, very happy being still in the material world. 
Yes, sometimes the person comes into the room, he, he just looked at everyone, but we already see his taste and his aroma and his energy. And somebody and people they want to leave or on the contrary they want to be beside him. It depends on the aroma. There must be different aromas. Yes, I mean the spiritual, this aura, this invisible energy, invisible aroma. We have only we have only 12 minutes left, and in the end we would ask you to wish somebody to our listeners, and also we, I want to speak about we were talking that somehow we we fell down to this material world, we are eternal, but somehow, how it happened by our, by our curiosity, or how, how did we get here, and how can we want to come back, because those who are feel comfortable here, and they don't mind die and live here, and be born here, those who already feel this, feel that there is something wrong with this world, and it's not really comfortable here, and I would like to be in a different place. I want to live my life in service, to study, to, to learn, to serve, and as a result I would like to, to speed up this process. There is no guarantee that in our new body we would remember everything and we, we wouldn't fall down, we wouldn't get in a family where people know about the Lord and have the relationship with Him and help you to practice. To practice. I think uh, all everybody feels feel that there is something wrong in this world. I've heard this often. People feel that there is something wrong, and there must be something must be corrected here in politics, in economy, and they're trying to improve this world. But this world is already. It's built, it's made on the platform of mistakes and imperfection. That's why Jesus said that to correct such mistakes is the same as to put a new cloth on an old cloth. What's wrong here? For example, there is, there is nationalism. People don't like each other because of, they are of different nations because people are look different and they have different cultures. We are creating this ourselves. We are creating boundaries and laws and different religions and conflicts, children and fathers, and greed in economy, rich and poor, communists and capitalists. This is the problems. These are the problems. They are building palaces, exploiting others. This is the problem. And it may be described for, for a long time about these wars. What are people making? Who, who is hindering them from living in peace? No one is prohibiting them from living peacefully. But the human being in, in a Ignorant human being is a problem. If you would use this world knowing its laws, there will be no problems. People would be happy. Men and women and children, families. It can be happy, but we don't have such knowledge here. So we just now mending our old clothes, trying to correct something in this world. But it doesn't change our life. For example, the progress of science. Before, in the ancient times, people, they were shooting arrows at each other. And people died. 
Now we have guns, automatic guns, and there is the same death from a bullet or from an arrow. So where is the progress here? It's the same death here. What's the progress? Before people were... Uh, the transport was the horse. Now we are moving by cars. So what's the progress? In a relationship, we don't have any progress. There is only progress in technologies. I can I can kill more people now, but is this the progress? When we started to be more diseased, when we started being more suffering, is this the progress? We have a good phones, good cars and airplanes, but we are suffering there. We can't live in peace. This is what we are getting now. So we created this world by our, our selfish desire. And this is the mistake. Our selfish desire is the mistake. When we start to live for a well-being of everyone, then the world changes. We can change the whole world by one week if we all start to live for the welfare of our uh, for, for those who are close to us. And the result will be really... Uh, it will be wonderful. The nature will be purified and we'll get more knowledge. Everything will be transformed, even the nature, even trees and animals. If we will live in this peaceful world, they would also, nature would give us everything that we need. It is described in Puranas. It is described in this philosophy can be uh, can enlive everything around. Earth may give so many gifts that we would. It would give even too much. If we would be able to cooperate with the Lord, then this planet would become a paradise. It would be a golden age. So the person is such a person, is, is the problem. And we are choosing this selfishness. We want, we want to be God, because we want to be God. We are imitating Him in this world. That's why we are rival. Uh, we have rival, rivalry with each other. We, are, we don't need any authorities. We want to decide by ourselves. No, if you are not listening to God, you are no one in this world. And your opinion would always be mistaken. The, you are the wrong thing in this world. If you are li not living in harmony with uh, the Lord's laws, there should be no deceit, no, no murders in this world. We can't live like this because of our selfishness, because competition and greed. We've created, so we should say something wrong with me. I live, I live, I'm not living correctly. So we've created this world and we are the reason of destruction in this world. We could change this world in a week, if Pura, what Purana says, if we would live by the God's laws. I am, actually, I am the problem in this world. Look, uh, I think that uh, I think that um, uh, spiritual knowledge now are hidden on purpose. Uh, we are living in the world of uh, very subtle lies and the false values are decorated so beautifully to deceive us. And police and the government, education, at schools, everything has lost its higher standards. And actually, no one tells us that now we would, we would destroy your education to make you foolish so that you could divide, you couldn't tell the black from white. We are given 
обесцененные вещи, но We are given this um, low, low quality things and but make it very beautiful. And the movies now uh, made about uh, murders, about uh, thrill, thrills and fears. I think that this world is really cynically uh, deceiving us all the time and hiding the spiritual real values under them, under them disguise. And you say that we should live by pure spiritual laws, but how to do it? How, how to make them obvious for all people? How to open them for all people? How to help? I would really like to change the world in one week. There are three ways to for this goal. The way of service. You may get, gain this goal by your selfless service. If people would see that you are doing it not for yourself, then they would listen to you. The second way is the way of heroism, when you are sacrificing for others, for the well-being of others, also people would follow you. So the selfless ser servant of everyone and your hero in service. And the third way, the way of a scientist, a scientist who has true knowledge. If you have all three ways, you may influence the whole world. If you are pure, you may combine all these three ways and you may change the whole world. Even one of these ways would make your life successful. Great. Great. Devotion and love to love and to living beings, knowledge and detachment. I think it's a great end for our conversation. I've prepared many questions. I just have to thank you and please wish us something. Please be, become heroes. <laughs> we have we have an important life ahead of us not to leave it in vain just become heroes become he scientists become servants thank you very much I would read another quote from the same movie he said all our sufferings are temporary but our children and grandchildren, they would understand it. They would understand better than us and they would throw out all petty things and they would believe, they would learn to love each other and would, they, would tell, they would tell our children, their children, look up, look at the sky. And we would say, look at your heart, all the sky is there. Thank you.